Today, turn your Bibles. We're starting a new series. I'll see if uh, you can find this passage. Uh, it's Genesis chapter 1. See if you can find that. Um, we're studying Genesis. And what we're going to do is for four weeks, we're going to study Genesis. Then we're going to take a pause, work through some parables uh, from Mother's Day to Father's Day. We're going to teach on parenting. Then later in the summer, fall, we're going to come back to Genesis um, take a break, and then we'll come back to it. We're just going to keep kind of immersing ourselves in Genesis because it's the foundation for our faith. And uh, there's so much that's found in Genesis that we want to get into it. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but on the first Sunday of the year, I forewarned you and said, during 2022, I want you to make something this year, create something. And so get your wheels turning, get planning. And the whole purpose is as we study God, the creator, it, I think you'll feel it different. You will understand it different if you are creating something yourself. Uh, now, my son Caleb's wife, Rachel, she came to me and said, I'm pregnant. Is, does that count? <laughs> Absolutely. You give me grandkids, that, that's, a, that's a great one. That's a really, really, really good one. Um, that, that, that counts on it. Um, but think about what would you make? What would you create? It probably would be something in your interest. Um, I believe that you could write a song. I believe I heard someone say that they're going to start the book that they've always wanted to write. Like uh, kind of you, you can do that. I had one person say, I'm not very creative. And we just began to talk about it for a little bit. And then she said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to organize something. That's the way God has wired you. That, that's really what you, you can create a peaceful space. Um, and no, everybody's got, got things. We got woodworkers. We got metal workers. We got artists. We got, uh, uh, I, I fully expect Tim Parsley to make a mural somewhere. Um, like everybody is different. What are you going to make? What are you going to create? Because the first thing we understand about God is he's a creator. And he makes us in his image to create as well. As we study this, uh, can we have a, a message before the message? Uh, I really feel like this is important as we dig into a new book. Also for you to understand me. When I was a, a young pastor, I knew I needed to teach on the word of God. And God helping me, I believe every Sunday that I've ever taught, I've taught on the word of God. But there's a change in me from my first years to now. My first years, I would take the Bible, and then as I would pray through it and try to understand it, this was my, this was my thought. God, would you help me make this useful? Would you help me make this useful? And then I ran across 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It says, all Scripture... All Scripture is God-breathed. That God-breathed um, is going to be different after you read Genesis 1. You're going to understand what God does and is useful. <laughs> like, I don't need to make it useful. It already is useful. And the Holy Spirit just said, just teach it. Just teach it and let me work. Let me loose and let me make it useful. I love when multiple people come up and go, that sermon, like, you've been reading my mail? That sermon was just for me. No, it's this is what Scripture is. It's useful. Sometimes it teaches us. Sometimes it rebukes us and corrects us. Sometimes it trains us in righteousness. Why? So that we can be fully equipped for every good work. For whatever God has called us to do, like we would have our equipment on. Think about what you're going to make. I bet there's some equipment involved in it. And in that equipment, you, you, know, like you think about you know, the baseball academy. you got catcher's gear and baseball equipment. If you know, we just got out of the NFL season, you, know, you don't dare get on a field without your equipment on. If you're a welder, you got your welding helmet and, you know, and everything. If, if you're a cook, you got your pampered chef. You know, whatever it is, you've got your equipment. I feel like so many of us are just not equipped for the work God's called us because we're not in the Word of God. So have, have, have you ever done any circuit training? Um, in circuit training, you get on one machine and it works maybe your biceps. 
and then you go to the next one and it works your triceps. It balances you out and you walk your way around, you work your way through the circuit and it hits all the target muscle groups so that you're fully equipped, you're fully strengthened. I want you to look at this. I think this is God's circuit training for the Word of God. Um, we need to look at the Word of God in different ways. We read the Word. Everybody reads the Word, but that's just one machine. Think about listening to the Word, memorizing it. You can't meditate on it if you don't memorize it, but then you can. Uh, praying the Word of God, studying it, sharing it, writing it out. The list went to the next sheet, and I can't, you can't get it even on this one. Live it. It's all meant to be lived. And I'm sure you can think of others. Come up to me and tell me what, so we can make the list even bigger. But it's digging into the Word. And the, has anybody tried writing it out? This is commanded in Scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 17 is a specific command. The official copy of God's laws will be kept by the priests of the Levite tribe. So, as soon as anyone becomes king, and there's priority, isn't there, to that. As soon as anybody becomes king, he must go to the priest and write out a copy of these laws while they watch. Why do you put in while they watch? So you don't just go, hey, did it, got it, we're good, <laughs> you know, while they're watching. Can you imagine, let, let's, let's take a look at it. It's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is the Torah. It's God's law. That's how much they were required to write out. Um, and that's a huge, a huge, huge commitment. Ever read Leviticus, let alone write it out? Um, and so each one of them, why do you think... He had to write it out. You're, you're accountable for it once you've written it out. You can't say, well, I didn't know that. Um, you know it, but it slows our mind down. So here's what I'm asking with Genesis. We're going to study Genesis. I want you to write out the first chapter. You go, Whew. <laughs> that first chapter, I can do that. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if you can do it. I'm not saying type it out. Write it out. Use your hand. Write it out. Because it slows down our mind. When you read something or listen to something, your mind goes at a quicker pace. I did that this week. And as I was writing it out, I gained insights that I never knew in all the years of listening to it, reading it, um, studying it. It's like, oh, I didn't see that because my mind slowed down. Can you read it? Uh, so you got what we're doing. We're studying Genesis. We're going to create something. We're going to write this book out. By the way, I think you need an incentive. Anybody who writes out the first chapter, brings it back, takes it to the cafeteria, presents it to the cafeteria, it's a free drink. You got that? It's, not, it's free to you, but I'll make sure it gets paid somehow. Um, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Like, learn how to do this. This is really, really big. Um, on this. So Genesis 1, let's, let's begin to study this. Genesis 1, in the beginning, God. Don't, let's just not rush through that. Of all the things that could have been written down, it says, in the beginning, God. I think many of our marriages would be different if it's in the beginning, God, with our marriage. Um, this morning, the first person that walked into the church, um, I said, how can I pray for you? It's 8.30 service. He said, my son and daughter-in-law are at the hospital today having a baby, like in labor. I don't know if it's happened yet. Could be happening right now. And like there's a new birth. Can you imagine that child's beginning is today? And what if their life began with this verse, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. It it all starts with God. And by, by the way, we just studied Revelation as a Bible study. It all ends with God. But it all starts with God and it all ends with God. Can you imagine living a life that starts with God and doing it God's way? Not trying to figure it out my way, uh, but it, it's not the world is centered around me. In the beginning, God. And look what God did. God created 
God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. I love the fact that in John chapter 1, verse 1, that we read so many times last year, John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That capital word was Jesus. That in the beginning, He was with God, and He was God. In chapter, chapter 1, verse 2, you have the Spirit of God present, hovering over the waters, and it's just forming the basis of this is a God that, was, was, that came in the flesh. This is a God that's spirit, that's moving over us. This picture. Now, if I were going to create a cake or brownies, um, I've got uh, one lady that would help me, Betty Crocker. Anybody know Betty? Um, go to the store, get Betty Crocker, um, look on the side or back, and it's like, uh, what is it, two eggs and milk or whatever it is, and you throw in Betty Crocker, and you mix it together, and then what's the next step? No, lick it. You lick, you, you lick half the stuff, and then you throw the rest in the oven, and you bake it, and um, you, know, you get it out. Like, that's, that's making something, isn't it? Um, when you think of, like, we're going we're gonna to make something. But what did I do? I, I had to go get the ingredients. I don't want you to miss this. When God made heavens and the earth, what were his ingredients? Let's put the scripture back up there. The earth was formless and empty. There's no Betty Crocker. There's no wheat to make the flour. God had to make the stuff to make the ingredients to make the earth. You know, it's one thing, like every one of us is going to create something. I don't want you to bypass the fact of who created the ingredients for you to make what you're making. Like everything that we could possibly create, there's something that was there. It's, it's kind of the, the beginnings of it. Where did that come from? Where, where did, who created the ingredients to make everything that we have? The word is called ex nihilo. That's a word that just means out of nothing. He created it out of nothing. He didn't have anything to do it. That's what separates God from what you and I are create. Now, you and I are going to create something. Know this, that whether you think about it or not, as you create something, you're going to go through some steps. The first one is you're going to think about purpose for what you make. You're going to think, like, um, my, my daughter-in-law, she's having a baby, so Cora is moving out of the nursery. She's moving next door to the guest room. Um, I hope they call it Cora's room, uh, and it's not the guest room. She's no longer... You know, they, they thought that uh, when the baby comes, before the baby comes and she loses her room, her bed, um, gets a new baby, like, wouldn't it be nice if she had her own room? So we're, uh, when, when, the, when Cora was born, we built a closet and put all the stuff, closet organizer. So now... With the guest room, we're doing that. So I began by saying, what do you want to put in this closet? What are the sizes of the boxes that you want to put? What are the, what are the links, the length of the clothing that you want to put in it? You think through purpose so that you can design. And after you got a purpose, you start thinking of the design and kind of drew up something. How would this look? And draw up that. And then you start with, just putting the pieces together. These are all the steps. And the reason why I want you to understand this, when it just says, in the beginning, God created, the perfect creator thought of purpose. He thought of you. And he thought of your purpose and the world's purpose and everything in it before he created and before he designed. And it's so important because I believe that there are really two worldviews here. The world, one worldview is that there's a designer and a creator. The other worldview is that this is all by accident. Now, I'm not against science. I want to say this really, really clearly. Study everything that you can possibly study of God's creation. Study everything, every single thing that you can, 
And I absolute guarantee this. If you go with a truthful heart, it will take you back to the Creator. Study everything. Romans chapter 1, verse 20 is a key verse when we look at this. It says, for since the creation of the world, like once that happened, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. What, what's happened? Once creation took place, things that we couldn't see about God are suddenly really clear. Like we see the quality and the nature of God but being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. I'd say this, for today, shut your Bible. Just, just shut it and just start looking at what has been made. Just look around. Like this week, go out and look at what has been made and without using the Bible, you will see the Creator. You will see it very, very, very clearly. Look at everything that's made. Here's your first one. We just sang a song, Great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting saying, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness. Let's prove it with creation. Tonight at 629, you go outside and you will see the sunset. And how do we know that? that God is faithful and true and orderly, and at 716, you will see it rise up tomorrow morning. And we know this, you can look back 200 years, you can look 200 years ahead, and you know exactly how the planets are going and what's going to happen. And on April 8th of 2024, people will be looking at the sky and going, I don't see it, I don't see it, I don't see it, and then there's going to be an eclipse. It's going to happen because our God is faithful and our God is true. You can count on Him in absolutely every single way. Forget the Bible. Just look at creation. I had a teaching doctor come up to me after, after the f first service and just said, you cannot open up a cadaver. A cadaver is somebody that's died. After they've died, they've donated their body to science. You can open them up and look at them. And he said, you cannot look at just how everything is in there. And just how amazing this is. And the dis different systems that are wrapped around one another. He said, you cannot look at anybody and go, how did that happen? Did that happen by design? Or did that happen by accident? And I would say this. It, it takes far more faith to believe that it happened by accident than there was a purpose, doesn't it? Like, we wouldn't do this. You take whatever it is that you create... You take whatever it is, and then you go up to somebody and say, did this happen by accident or design? And they might say to you, well, it wasn't very good, but I think it was a design. <laughs> you didn't execute it very, very good, but you can't help but see the purpose. You can't look at a telephone pole without seeing that somebody put it there on purpose. And that, that's what it's there. Can you see in the beginning God created Here's the great thing about our God. He creates things. He's so faithful and so true. He makes amazing kinds of things so that his qualities are, are, are just clearly, clearly seen. But our God has never made two things identical. You've heard about two snowflakes never being the same. Two any things are never the same. So my friend said, well, you can open up a cadaver. You can see the same systems that are in everybody. But this one will have a different nerve in a place that you just wouldn't be expecting or an artery in a place that you wouldn't be expecting because every single human being is different. Um, they're, they're like, isn't this absolutely amazing that our God... Our, like, let's, let's take a look at creation. Um, we got a picture. I just asked Isaac um, in the back to put a, put a really nice picture that he would like. You begin to take a look at this and you begin to say, what are God's amazing qualities that you would see in that? Do you see majesty? Do you see strength? Do you see like amazing, amazing kind of creativity and beauty? That you see different rocks, that some rocks resist um, when corrosion hits them, and so they stand tall and beautiful. Other rocks 
that uh, when, when water or wind hit them, they erode and they look so different, and all of it makes creation. I want you to begin to think, like just, just studying something and knowing how it was made doesn't determine who made it. I'm probably going to do some kind of a woodworking project this year, kind of trying to create it. As I create it, um, some of you might be able to study it and look at it and go, I see evidence of saw marks on that where I didn't sand down. And so I can see that a saw created this. And you would be absolutely correct. And I would say not only did a saw create it, but the saw was in the hands of somebody who thought it out. Look and study science. You can discover how this world was created as you begin to study it. Study, study, study. But I believe that if it all went back to a big bang, I ask, who created the bang in the first place? And it all points to a God. Can you understand that? That you can be, um, you can be intellectually very, very strong and look at science and you can understand that it all points back to this creator. I do, um, every once in a while, those, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Sodoku, Sodoku, whatever, those puzzles, and you try to figure things out. Have you ever gotten on, in on one of those puzzles, like you're guessing numbers and stuff, and you get to one place where you, it's kind of a hard one, and you guess, and you guess wrong, and when you guess wrong, it never works. I want to say this very, very clearly. If your first piece to your whole puzzle of this life on earth, if the first number that you put in there is without God, your puzzle will never work. You will never make sense of this life. He puts it right in the very first verse. You know the first one you can write down? I got this one. It's an easy one. In the beginning... God. Everything that there is, it's God. Our God is a God that creates. Our God is a God that recreates. And what you'll discover in the whole Bible is that God created in chapter 1 and chapter 2. Then in chapter 3, we made a mess of the whole world. And then from chapter 4 on, it's God saying, I can recreate, I can restore, I can redeem. I can take what is broken and I can make it new again. And so I want to give you some hope here today. If whatever you began with, if it's been broken, you can take it back to the Creator and say, can you restore this? Can you make it new again? Can you take my life and what I've done with it and can you make it new again? And the answer is yes. But you have to begin at the beginning. <laughs> And here's the beginning, going back and say, God, you're the creator. I'm not. You're the only one that can make my life beautiful. I can't. You're the writer of the story, and this doesn't make sense if your spirit doesn't hover over my family and my marriage and my home and my job and my everything. Holy Spirit, would you come hover over me right now? Would you rest on me? And so that's our commitment here this morning. I just want to ask you, which, which worldview are you living on? Do you want to begin your life with in the beginning God? Or, and with that goes the fact that you have a purpose. God has a plan for you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and you can count on Him. He is faithful and true. Or am I just an accident in this world? I want to tell you, you can count on Him. So God, I pray that your spirit right now would hover over some broken marriages and lives and broken bodies and spirits. There are people without hope who are crushed right now. God, if you could take something and make it out of nothing, you can certainly do something with a person who's lost all hope. Do it again today. Do it again, Father. Show off your faithfulness. Show off your majesty and your strength. God, I want to say that you're the creator, and I am the creation. And I was meant to give you praise and glory. Let's stand and offer our time to him.
Lord, every one of us is going somewhere this week. We don't, we don't know. We're all on a mission trip. You know who we will encounter. You know everything about them. You know what they need. Holy Spirit, rest on us. I pray that you would stir up the gifts within us, that it would make a difference in their lives. God, gives a, give us the word of encouragement or the word of knowledge that we might need for each specific person. God, I pray today that someone could know Jesus because somebody in Sunrise shares Jesus with somebody. God, I pray today that you would stir your church and move us out, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace.